Laravel queues are probably one of the framework most powerful features. And with Vapor, you don't need to perform any additional configuration to start using queues as Vapor automatically uses Amazon SQS as default queue driver. In addition, Vapor will automatically scale your queue processing on demand within seconds. Now, what all of this means is that you just need to worry about your application, and writing in dispatching queue jobs will work as expected. Let's see an example. Now, this application contains a podcast route that the only thing it does is dispatching a process podcast job that will send a message to the logs. Meaning that if I visit this route right here, I expect to see this message appearing on the logs. So let's see that. Let's head over to our browser, visit our vanity domain and just type slash podcast. We can see that our job was dispatched correctly. So now if I visit, for example, Vapor UI, I can click on my Q logs and see that my podcast was processed successfully. And of course, without no surprise, if I visit the podcast route multiple times, just like that, sure enough, if I get back to U Vapor UI, I will see my message processing a podcast multiple times. Now, so far, we have dispatched only five jobs between 2 and 3 p.m., Meaning that if I go to metrics, sure enough, I have five jobs being dispatched between 2 and 3 p.m. Now, failed jobs just work as expected as well. So far, in the past hour, we have zero failed jobs, but let's intentionally fail a job so you can see it appearing in this UI. Now, just like the process podcast job, we also have a process article that the only thing it does is throwing an exception making this job fail. Now, this job is dispatched from the article route, meaning that every time someone visits the article route, I do expect the process article to be dispatched but when Laravel queues are going to process the job, the job will fail. So let's visit this route and see what happens. So let's visit our route article. And I can see that my article job got dispatched. But now if I go to the Vapor UI slash metrics, I can see a new job failed in the last past hour. In addition, if I want to see why this job app failed, I can just click on jobs failed and then I can see the exact reason why this job app failed. Now, when using Vapor UI, you have access to multiple details like the queue, the name of the job, the message that got thrown, the entire payload, and one cool thing here is that I can see that my job got at least tried three times. So if I go to my queue logs, sure enough, I can see this exception being thrown three times as well. Now, you can also perform multiple actions on failure jobs, such as sharing this exact view details with a colleague, retrying this failure job, or even forget if you don't want to handle this job anymore. Now, one final remark before we close the episode. As we have seen in the past, there is three lambda functions by default when using Vapor. One for HTTP, another one for the CLI, and another one for queues. And this basically means that if I can define the memory available for the HTTP lambda function, sure enough, I can also define the memory available for the queue worker using the queue lambda function. 
and that's it about cues in Vapor.